Hey guys, welcome back to the channel and in this video we will understand the representation which is also known as the formulation of galvanic cells. So before starting with this topic, I have a small request for you all. That is, please watch the video on in which I have told you all what is exactly a galvanic cell which is also known as voltaic cell. Because after seeing that seeing that video, it will be better for you all to understand this video because over there also I have considered this same example. So let's start with this video now. For writing the formulation of cells, there are certain conventions which we need to follow. The first convention is that the anode is written at extreme left and the cathode is written at extreme right. As we all know, in this example, this Zn is acting as our anode and copper is acting as our cathode. So since Zn is an anode over here, so Zn needs to be written on the extreme left and cathode being a ca sorry copper being a cathode needs to be written on the extreme right. What is written in between this Zn and Cu we will understand ahead. The second point states that insoluble substances or gases are written besides the electrodes which means that if these electrolytic solutions contain any insoluble substances or any insoluble gases then they are written besides these electrodes over here. But since in our example there are no such insoluble substances or gases so there is no need to write anything. The third point states that a vertical line is used to distinguish phase boundary. We will understand this third point when, when we will complete our fourth point. So what is fourth point? Fourth point states that write the aqueous electrolytic solutions ions in between. Which means that since Zn electrode gets decomposed into Zn2 plus ions and it gives away two electrons. These Zn2 plus ions which are gone in the electrolytic solution are to be written besides this Zn because they are produced by this electrode itself and as we all know at this copper cathode this Cu2 plus ions will come and gather over this copper cathode. So Cu2 plus needs to be written with this copper cathode. Now what does the third point mention is that a single vertical line is used to distinguish phase boundary which means that since Zn is a solid and Zn2 plus ions are in a liquid form so to distinguish between these two phases we have to draw a single vertical line between them. Similarly Cu2 plus ions are present in a liquid state and copper is present in as an electrode in solid state so to distinguish between both of them we need to draw a single vertical line. The fourth, sorry, the fifth point states that mention the concentration states and pressure if given. Since our Zn electrode is present in a solid state so we need to mention that as S and here copper electrode is also present in a solid state so we need to mention as S again and our Zn2 plus and Cu2 plus are present as one molar solution. So we write Zn S and Zn2 plus as one molar solution and Cu2 plus as one molar solution. This one molar will be given to us in the question itself. You don't need to worry about that. What does the six point states that? Separate these two half cells with double vertical lines. Since this is our one half cell and this is our second half cell. The cell formulation for this half cell is our this left hand side and for this right hand side half cell is our this right hand side. The six point simply states that we need to separate both of these by a double vertical line which is like this. We have written this as it is below and this also as it is below we have just separated it with two vertical lines. So these were all about conventions. The seventh extra point is that if two ions are present then separate them with a comma. Means if in this 
Zed uh, solution, there are Zn two plus as well as Zn three plus. Then you have to write Zn two plus here here and just put a comma and ahead you have to write Zn three plus. But in this example, there are no such two ions, so we are not writing anything. So these are the conventions which you need to follow while writing a cell formation. We will understand with one example and how the question is given in the exam. So this is the question. The cell composed of Mg anode and Cu cathode consists of two half cells. That is Mg two plus, which is present as in one molar, and Cu two plus ions are present in again one molar. So since Mg is our anode, so anode is written on the leftmost side, and copper being a cathode is written on the rightmost side. And usually electrodes are present in the solid state, so we write S over here, and Since Mg gives away two Mg Mg two plus ions, so we write Mg two plus beside Mg, which is present in one molar. So we write one molar here, and Cu two plus, which are again present in one molar. So we write one molar here, and at the end we need to separate these two half cells with a double vertical lines, and a single vertical line is used to distinguish between a solid and a liquid solutions. Okay. So guys, yeah, this was all about the formulation of uh, your electrolytic uh, cells, sorry, galvanic cells. So if you like this video, then please do subscribe to the channel and do not forget to hit that bell icon and the like uh, as well. Guys, thanks for watching this video.